all this filament, an empty printer. Let's print what you want. It's Filament Friday. This week's project comes from subscriber Django. It's an iPhone 5 case designed by Thingiverse user Kevin McKay95. It's actually a very simple design, but I like it. And he actually printed it on a DaVinci 1.0 according to his instructions. And he also says that you should print it at 101%, which I find very interesting. And then he put his initials on the inside, so I'm curious how well that'll print. Now he says it will shrink a little bit through the ABS, so that's why the 101%. So I'm going to use that same 101% and show you how to do that. So I downloaded the .stl file and loaded into XYZWare on my Mac. And then I repositioned it here to flip it 180 degrees. Now if you hold the shift key, this makes it easier. So once I had it on its back, then I wanted to move it and center it. So I moved the X direction over. And then I noticed that the Z was offset by like 10 millimeters. So I just hit the land button and that put it flat. So the next step was to resize this. So I clicked on the resize button and it took me two clicks to get 101%. And then I got this out of bounds error. And I'm like, this is strange. So I zoomed in closer and took a look. I couldn't see anything wrong. So I went back to the resize, clicked it again, 101 stayed. I clicked down, 101 stayed. I clicked up, 101 stayed. Clicked it again, then I got 102. So apparently there's 201 settings, so I chose the second one. And then on a hunch, I went back and clicked on the land button, and the boundary error went away. So this clearly was just a quirk with the XYZ wear on Mac. And believe me, there's several of them. So I clicked on the export button, and I selected supports, because I got the holes in the side. And I used a 15% fill. And I wanted to print this quicker, so I just did a 0.3 but a thick shells and then supports were low. So I click export and I let it slice. So I verified that everything was right. It was 0.3 layer height, 15% fill, thick shells, everything looked good. And then I checked it was a little over two hours to print and just under nine meters of plastic. So I sent it off to the printer. Okay, so the print is done, so I'll take it out and we'll take a look at it. Slid right off the bed and it looks, looks decent. His initials on the bottom came out, it's a little bit rough, but they came through. So if you want to put your initials on the inside, that's probably a, a neat idea. There's definitely some buildup on the inside and then there's the support on the side that I need to dig out of there but overall it looks like a pretty good print now I, I mush these down like I've mentioned in other videos and that's how I get my prints to stick and that way it doesn't slide around but that leaves kind of a crappy edge all the way around well I wanted to show you guys a tool that I found it's a finishing tool for machinists. I saw a guy use one of these on a, on a video somewhere. He was doing 3D printing, but he also does machining work. And he used this thing. It actually pivots as you use it. So he just used it, and he was cleaning out some holes. And several people commented below his video, like, where'd you get that tool? And he never answered them. So I've been looking for that tool, and I just happened to be... At a production tool supply and they had these sitting on the counter <laughs> like I've been looking for that so I bought one and it works just like it did for him in that video it it's great for cleaning off these prints and actually for cleaning out the uh, support material I can just stick it inside a section and then just pull it and it slices that stuff right out of there and then I can just use it to 
clean it. Just pull it across. It's like I did before with my X-Acto knife, but this thing pivots so I don't end up digging into anything and taking out too much. But what I really like about it is that it's great for cleaning these edges that got smushed down on the bed. I just take it and pull it across like that and it gives you a nice rounded edge. A lot better than sitting here with sandpaper or I mean you may still want to use sandpaper to finish it but it gets the worst of it off and a lot better than exacto knife. And you just kind of pull it across. And you don't have to worry about it hitting you because it's sharp but it's not sharp to you know cut my finger if I slip and hit it. And, and I get a nice rounded edge now and I can go all the way around this thing. So this is this is a great great tool. But I did a little searching on you know where to find it and I found several different versions at many different prices. So I've tested this one, I've used this and I love it. I highly recommend it. So I actually put uh, this on my website. You can actually buy this through my website if, if you want. It helps the channel out, but you don't certainly have to. But if you're looking for it or don't want to go looking for it, I'm going to put a link in the description to my website where you can just go buy it and I'll ship it out to you. But it's if you have a local tool shop, it's called a finishing tool. It's just it's amazing. I, I could sit there. It's, it's great for carving this stuff. It just works so well. Now I don't I don't mind at all squishing down my prints because <laughs> this thing just it just does a miraculous job. And it's got like a curve to the blade. A little bit of a curve. So it gives you a little bit of a curve of, as it carves. And it only takes off, you know, like a little bit of plastic at a time. So I'm not gonna dig in. It's, it's just a great tool. I highly recommend it. So now that I've carved this and made a mess. The most important thing, let's see if that 101% worked and if it fits. So I've got my iPhone 5. And look at that. Beautiful. Snaps right in place. The holes line up on the sides. The camera hole lines up. And it's open top and bottom, which I like because I can still get at the the, uh, well, there's some strings here I got to cut off. You can still get at the phone jack and the charging connector, the on-off switch on top, but it's protected from dropping. Very simple, but very effective. <laughs> I like it. This is this is a nice print, nice design. This is definitely why I hoped it would be. Perfect. So that's it. That's today's Filament Friday project. Now I think the next step is to actually take this, import it into Tinkercad, and put my own logo on the back or something on the back so it prints out my own design. I can actually draw something out like I did in many videos ago where I drew my name and imported it in with a scanner and then made it into a 3D image through Tinkercad and I'm printing it. So I think I'll do that. I'll bring in an image, modify this in Tinkercad, and then print it out. I'll save that for another video. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And for those people who have asked, how can I support the channel? Well, there's a new feature in YouTube. It's this little eye thing up here. You click on it, and it'll bring down a link to my Patreon account. There's also a link in there to the tool. You can go right to my website. You want to just buy yourself a tool and support the channel. So that's it. See you next time.